Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in the shop, Mitch behind the cameras. Welcome back. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. We got a few things going on today. We're going to work on the base. There's some woodwork involved. There's some metal work involved as well. And uh, I thought I'd, I'd do a little update on what's new in the shop. So behind me is the giraffe bike. And I finally got the rear hub all fixed up and it's installed on the bike. Let's go have a quick peek. So there's the hub that, that gave me so much problems last time. If you watch the video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So there it is, it spins nicely. And there's the freewheel working with the skip tooth sprocket. So I think that's a nine tooth it's on it. So I'm happy with that. I made acorn nuts too. This weekend, I have a, a motorcycle going into the, into the motorcycle show. It's called the Ace Moto Show. It's in its second year in Vancouver. And they've asked me if I'll, I'll put this bike in. So I said, sure, we'll see you down there. We have lots of videos on this Aramaki. It was, it was one of the most popular things I did. And uh, I had a good time working on it. It's a replacement for the race bike that got stolen in 2005 in Oregon, in, in Brookings, Oregon. I came out of the motel room and my whole van was gone. They got the race bike and everything. I really like this, this glue, it's quite wonderful. Not just for guitars, just in the shop. If you need to make, if you need to hold something really, really fast, it's got accelerator as well. If you need it, sets up quite nicely. There we go. I like that CA glue. I call it base glue and my neighbor says, there's no such thing as base glue. I'll do one corner here. I've got some nice chisels, a German chisel and an English chisel made in Sheffield, England. This is, it was my father's, it's quite old. So, but you know, what gets made in Sheffield, England anymore? I don't know, not much. So here we go. A bit of pressure. There we go. So that kind of squares up the corner. This this is too wide, so I've got another chisel here. Just use a little bit of pressure. I did some work on the base body and what I did, I, I took a piece of, of cardboard, white cardboard, and it goes down the center line and then this radius and shape, it matches the base, which is a little ways away. And then I made up this shape here. This is where the parts go. That's these guys here. And I cut out the middle because that's gonna be the cavity. And you see here how I've got marks, so I, I know where it needs to line up. This is the cover that goes over top. This is where the jack goes, when, where I, I plug it in. And these are, the, are gonna be the three knobs. This is gonna be made out of aluminum and, and I'm gonna make aluminum knurled knobs. I'm cutting out the template now for the routing. This is MDF and I'm on the drill press. Then I'm filing, and that's it. So what I'm gonna do now is to take a piece of tape. This is gonna get held in the, in, in the mill, and we're gonna do this hole first. 
okay? That's where the jack goes in, like that. So this is gonna be a flat section here. Can you see there's a flat? So that's where the nut goes up against. So I have to get the angle right. So I know where the flat is. So what I'm gonna do is to, I'll put the tape on like that. And then in the mill, when I hold it in the mill, this is gonna be level. That's my plan. Okay, so that's my horizontal line. I've got a, a pencil line there. I need to find the center. And then we have to figure out the size of the hole. I'll just measure that. Got the base body and I've got half inch, half inch cold rolls. I got eight millimeter bolts here and I've spaced it because there's not a lot of thread there. So it has to fit pretty well. So got cardboard on either side. And I'm looking at that piece of masking tape that I put on there. And I'm making it level. Can you see that? It's level. And I'll tighten it up. It took a little while to get this this uh, half inch, half inch cold roll. I had to drill a couple holes and find the right length. And see, I got shims. I got a bunch of washers here to get the length just right. So a little bit of fine tuning went on. And what I have to do now is that I got to get this over here. Now I can move the head out and that gives me more leverage to, to move it when I pull it. And we're almost at the end here. That's the end there, I can't, can't go more than that. So. Okay, so we're gonna drill a hole. So what we need to do now, you see there's a, a shoulder here, or it's larger. We have to take an end mill or something like that, and I wanna go down a little bit so that this is kind of hidden. Okay, we're good, we can take it out. So here's my template and I've, I've lined up my marks and what I wanna do, I'm gonna put a dotted line there and then I know where the, where the holes have to go into. I'm doing a dotted line inside so it's a little bit smaller than the actual cavity so that I won't end up with any felt pen marks. I've got some drills here. We have to go in here, into there, and then we also have to go from here into there at a, a shallow angle. You can see that I'm, I'm not gonna go like that. It's gonna be shallow. Hear it hitting here, so I'm going to bend the drill a bit. Tight 
take off the cardboard and here's the template for routing. So I put, put that like that. I know exactly where it goes because I see the felt pen inside. Ooh, that's quite, that's kind of a lot. Okay. I'm going to draw some holes now so that the router bit doesn't have to work as hard. And that's well, pretty good. Let's go to the drill press, see what we can do now. So far, so good, right? Last week in the shop, what a disaster working on that rear hub. I won't forget about that one anytime soon, so let's go do better today. Okay. Okay, so I'm happy with how that turned out. This is what I'm gonna make next. This is a, a template, and that's gonna cover that up like that. I don't have the screws yet. I've ordered, I've ordered screws on a, a bass or a guitar. It's always Phillips head. Seems like they never use anything else, only Phillips. Got a piece of 6061-080. So I'm gonna trace this. Then I'm gonna punch those. So I'm gonna drill three holes. That's for the pots, you call them. A potentiometer. These are the 500s. You can also get 250s. I think I'm going to drill the holes next. It's easier hanging onto a larger piece of metal as opposed to a smaller piece. Nice lamp. Thank you, Mike. You notice how I've got this at an angle? I aim it because I can see, then I bring it up. A little technique, even with a center punch. Using my vernier. Oh, it's 3 8 so. If I go a 64th over, there's 3 8 It's 20. 564, so there we go, that'll work. This is the truth. There we go, it's got a little bit of play, but that's that 64th of an inch, 164th of an inch. I got a Dreadnought file. I got this off my father. He had this back in the 60s. 
the thing just keeps on going. It works really well on aluminum like this. It's not super sharp anymore, but it cuts. It doesn't grab. I'm going to get this anodized black, I think. And the knobs, we're going to make knobs next. And they're going to get anodized black as well. I think what we'll do now is just see if everything fits. There you go. Oh, the drill, the drill, well, I don't know. I guess as the drill went down, the hole got a little bit smaller. Well, I don't want to force it in because that'll be hard to get out. Anyway, I can make that work. Just needs a little sanding there, just a little sanding. And then these guys, this goes like that. And this has a little bit of a radius here. So I might have to do a little bit of hammering just to see, can you see there's a little bit of a gap here? See on the edge, a little bit of a gap. This has to be contoured just a little bit. Not gonna do that today. I just want to see how this looks and how if it fits in here because that's why, see, that's why I did this. That's how it all fits. We'll see how, how it works out. And I've got some aluminum here, 6061. Going to make some, some custom knobs. I know you can buy all this stuff, but that's just who I am. Years ago, when I didn't have much money, I just, if I wanted something, I couldn't afford it, I made it. That's, that's part of my DNA, I think you'd say. And that habit, it continued. <laughs> Even though finances have changed a bit. So there, that's what it looks like. Okay, let's go make some knobs now. Let's just see what happens with a little bit of scotch bite. See that surface there? Let's just see what happens. So I've got, cause that looks, it looks a little bit mottled. Maybe that's moisture or something, I don't know. But I'll take scotch bite, then I'll take it to the anodizer. So look at that. Comes up really nice, doesn't it? There's no marks in the surface because the plastic's been protecting it. Looks fine. Got the piece of metal in the lathe here and I'm gonna take a, a small cut, make it a little bit smaller, a, a little bit less than three quarters of an inch. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of a radius on the end. Then I'm gonna knurl it. Then we cut it off, we drill a hole and put a set screw in the side and done. Nothing's gonna go wrong. This is a knurling tool here, see? And I can change what I want. Okay, that's about a medium. That's a fine. We're gonna use the coarse. Ooh. So 
So we're going to slow it way down, like as in, as in threading speed. And you see how this moves? It can center itself. So we're going to center it on, on the aluminum. And then we lock it. What I'm going to do is I wind in the compound, I put pressure on, it starts to knurl, and then as I go along, I increase the pressure as I'm going out. Just that's what I've always done and it works. And then I back off there. Can you see how this is, this is more of a knurl than down here? This is not as deep as here. So I'm probably going to only use, I'll probably cut it off about there. Okay, this is the Holly Benton and I'm not using any of this. I'm just using, I'm using the neck. Can you see here? So that, you know, where I, I put the dot, that's just about right. So we're going to cut it off. These are made out of steel, I believe, because they're chromed. This is lighter. That's a good fit. Okay, that's gonna work fine. We're gonna make a little hole for a set screw. Now let's go over to the bench. So I got a, a four mil set screw here that's, I don't know if you can see it, pretty darn small. So we'll change to millimeters here. We'll just check. 3.83, so that's gonna work. And we gotta tap. 3.99, 4.03. Okay, I got a tap drill here. 3.29 millimeters. So we're gonna hold this. And that's where the, that's where it's gonna go, right like that. I got my anchor lube in my old bottle here and we're gonna tap a hole. Okay, we're good. So I just have to make sure this is straight up and down when it catches and starts. And then everything's right in line. It's always a little, a little tricky getting these going. There we go. I got a spiral point tap here. So if I'm careful, I can just go straight down. I don't have to back and forth like with a regular machine tap. You can feel it going through. It's getting easier. Okay. We'll do a little installation and then we're done.
unscrew goes on the bottom usually. That's a good fit. You hardly even need this. It's a little bit of a press fit. Oops. So there we go. Just need to build a couple more now. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked what we showed you today and a uh, little bit of woodwork, a little bit of metal work. Mitch and I do like coffee. If you buy us a few coffees, it really helps the channel to smoothly roll along. We got merchandise too. Please subscribe, like. See you next time. Take care.